A trained pharmacist, he's ventured into representational politics. Why politics and what has shaped and continues to shape his life? My guest is the Minister of State in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security and MP for Southeast St. Mary, Dr. The Honorable Norman Dunn. I'm Archibald Gordon. This is Profile. Dr. Norman Dunn, welcome to Profile. Thank you, sir. We're delighted to have you, given your you know, very varied career. <laughs> um, a lot to talk about from many different kind of perspectives. You have a multifaceted journey, um, both personally and professionally. Um, you know, as a pharmacist, starting off about over 25 years of experience, not just um, operating, but owning several pharmacies. You're up to seven right now, had nine before. And you have you know, involvement um, professionally and now politically, that's um, extended to healthcare organizations, political, um, the political party right now, the one that's governing. Um, and you just started out in 2016 entering um, representational politics and was re-elected with an even larger margin. We're going to be talking about some of those different kinds of um, aspects of your career. But you've been really, really busy. Do you relish that? I relish it. <laughs> Why? Because... Um I believe it's important for persons to set their goals, but to maximize each day. Because at the end of the day, you should say to yourself, this was a good day. So I, I relish having a lot to do, and I look forward each morning to do all that I can do to make it a very productive day. What would you say has made you a success? Well, I believe, um, First, belief in God. I, I grew up in a Christian household. And then, of course, um, just my mother. My, my mother was a simple lady, uh, sold in the market all her life, all her life. And I believe that, you know, once you're interacting with people, once you're satisfying people's need, then I believe you have set the foundation for success. It's yes. not, it's not all the education that you receive, it's a basic um, wherewithal that you would have been given to, like in my case by my parents, or cultivated along the way. Let's delve into that background a little bit more. Grew up in St. Mary. You, when you say that sort of background um, in St. Mary, what do you mean? What was growing up like? What was early life like? Um, growing up in Islington in particular, I mean a deep rural community, where river was the norm of a day or going to catch water is the norm of a day. Um, going to school, in my case, was miles away. I went to Water Valley Primary School. Um, I have to walk all that journey. Um, but of course, growing up for a large part of my life also in Anata Bay. So it's almost like you have a rural area, deep rural area, but you also have a, though it's rural, it's almost like an urban center, which is Anata Bay. So the mix of all of that, I, I believe, has given me a, a good foundation in how it ought to, to relate to people in particular. And therefore, it makes it so much more easier because you have a mix of these two cultures, if you want to call them that way, um, that has in fact molded me to such an extent that I'm so grateful to have grown up in a very humble household, not having much, but my mother, I believe, sacrificed her life for her kids in giving us a solid education. So growing up, I mean, we have all those experiences to draw from. Going to the river was fun. Going to the cane field was fun. Um, and, um, and just interacting with persons who, in those days, you look and know to say they don't have much. But we, we all believe that we had so much. And those, I believe, have, have given me a, a good foundation um, to the, for the journal time on now, so I'm grateful for that life that I lived. Part of that foundation is also the, I imagine, the values that you were being, uh, were being instilled in you by your parents. Yes, parent. Parent, your yes. mother, in mother. particular, raised with your mother. Yes. Father around, but not in the immediate, not in your immediate circumstances. 
Um, what was your mother saying? Is it what she was saying or what she was doing? What she was doing, I, I often commented and more so in recent times. You know, looking back on, on my life and my mother, I, I said to person, I think I was saying to you earlier that I don't think I've ever seen my mother curse. I've never seen my mother use a, use a curse word. I've never seen my mother upset to the point of being, you know, irrational. I've never seen my mother in an issue with her neighbor. I've never seen those things. So I never grew up with that sort of, you know, acrimonious lifestyle around me. I mean, I think my mother instilled us, you know, the importance of being our brother's keeper, our neighbor's friend, and the love of church. I mean, and not to be gospel chapel is what we, every Sunday we look forward to go to church. And it was important for us to go to church. But what was also important, so although we sold in the market with my mother, is important to go to school every single day. I don't think we miss school, apart from when I just started to go to school. I used to run home. <laughs> I never used to stay at school. I used to, I used to run away from school almost every day. They'd catch me and take me back to school. <laughs> that, was in, that was in Islington. So, <laughs> um, so I... I I, I relish those, those moments, and, and my mother has always been the rock that we, we, the children, were able to lean on and felt comfortable to lean on it. Is it that she was just, she was doing these things and you were noticing them, or were there also particular things she was saying to you about like the value of education, the value of, of hard course, work? Of course, what she was saying, because remember, as I said to you earlier, she sold in the market, right? I mean, she didn't want, or children to come and sell in the market. But anything's wrong with selling the market, I want to make that very clear. Because so many of us, and there's so many leaders today, came through that upbringing, selling in the market, going from house to house to sell like we did on a Sunday, especially on a payday, right? But she would always instill on, you know, you have to have a good education. You know, as, as parents would say every day, Pit them more, you turn on to something good, you know. <laughs> so, so, so she always, she always wants us to turn to something good, and she has done a very good job at that. I want to talk a little bit about the educational journey that you mentioned, but we have to take our first break on profile. My guest is the Minister of State and the Minister of Labor and Social Security, and he's also the Member of Parliament for South East St. Mary, Dr. The Honorable Norman <laughs> Dunn. Back with you on the other side of these messages.